What is up guys? Welcome back to Minty Motors. Today we have a special video. I usually don't do videos like this, but uh, I've had so many people ask me how we have our helmet set up for moto vlogs. Whoa, that was weird. Ooh, something's up. And the way we have it set up is probably one of the best ways. Like literally, we have tried forever. It took us three years to get through here just from trial and error guys and i'm telling you this is definitely my favorite and i think it's the best out there and it's so slim and perfect i will put everything in the description that you need guys you don't need everything i have like the cardo pack talk slim if you're a solar rider you don't need that that's just the intercom we use to communicate with each other in the name of the father son holy spirit amen dear lord Thank you for this beautiful freaking day here. Thank you for letting me be able to ride my bike whenever and wherever I want. And just keep us safe and let us have a blast. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Praise God. Anyways, let's get to the video right now. To the garage. So here's my moto vlog setup. This is my helmet. This is how I film and this is what I use to film. This is by far the best way to set up your helmet for moto vlogging and my all-time favorite and definitely the most reliable and low profile there is. So if you want to set up your helmet for moto vlogs, I highly recommend doing this way. Let's get started and show you what you need and how to set it up for the most part. First, let's get this light out of the way. This is an Oxbow Voyager. This is what I use for night moto vlogs. It is absolutely amazing. 2100 lumens and it's got a big battery pack that you mount to the side and to your goggles. Highly recommend getting this if you want to do night rides or night moto vlogs. It's freaking amazing. Next is the GoPro, of course. I use a GoPro Hero 7 Black Edition. I highly recommend using it. I believe this is the best GoPro to use for moto vlogs. It's got stabilization unlike some of the older models that are smaller and this is the smaller of the new models the 8 the 9 and the 10 are all much bigger but this films almost just as well so apart from the gopro you will also need the gopro mic adapter it runs about 50 dollars which is absolutely ridiculous for how big it is and pointless it's literally just a mic adapter you know so that's pretty steep on this side you see the door is gone. I, you have to remove this door to be able to get to the USB-C port, which is what the GoPro mic adapter mounts up to. So with that door, you cannot plug this in. The only issue with this is now it's not waterproof, but I've ridden in the rain. I've never had an issue. As long as you're not going swimming with it, you're fine. And I just put a piece of tape over the other port just to reduce dirt getting in it and dust because this plugs up the other one. So basically, you just plug that in and now you're set up to plug a mic in on the other side. Now let's put my GoPro back in the case. I have the full back door, not the hollow one that you can see the LCD screen. So I just ran a strip of Velcro and on the back of the mic adapter so that way it sticks to it. And then all you have to do is plug it in just like that. Probably the most important is figure out where you're gonna mount your GoPro. My personal favorite is under the visor guys. If you can mount it under the visor, like on the Fox V1, it is flat, so it fits a flat mount very well. If you can mount it there, highly recommend that. And then you just put your GoPro on landscape lock on upside down. Or if you can find a way to put it on the chin like Dally does, that is also another great spot. That is a little bit harder though, because you have to have this weird contraption to get the GoPro to sit where it's going to sit. Otherwise, it sits a little like this, or it's angled weird, or it's angled down or too high. You see some people who put it on the top of their helmet, but then the video looks like they're super freaking high off their bike and the quality is just a little different or on the side, but then everything's off centered. The main goal with mounting the GoPro for best quality is get it as close to the eye level as possible. So chin is pretty good or under the visor is also pretty good. I like under the visor, it's slimmer, it's easier to do if you can actually put a mount on your visor. Now, as far as mics, I'm gonna go ahead and pop off my visor to show you guys how, where I have it at. The mic I like to use is the Purple Panda mic. It runs about $40 and comes with everything you need. It might be a little expensive, but this is what you need. You need a good mic. This is the most clear mic I've ever used and I've used plenty of mics and it lasts quite a long time. The only issue with the Purple Panda mics and most mics you run into, it's a three ring mic. So if you look on this one, see how it only has the two black rings? You need a three ring mic to work for the mic adapter. If you don't have a three ring, it literally will have no audio at all. So all you need to get is I just got like a three inch, two ring to three ring mic adapter. So once you have your mic in, you just plug the three ring into the 
female side, and then you got the male side now that is a two ring. Let's get to how I mounted my mic. So right here, this is where my visor mounted up. My visor is all destroyed and broken from the amount of times I've crashed. I should probably really get a new helmet. I highly recommend if you crash and your helmet breaks, you, should, you probably crashed hard enough where you need a new one. This is how the visor mounts up. It's got this little ball that clips in here and so on the other side. But then it usually had a little triangular piece right here that was sort of like this. It clipped in and it went right here, but it completely broke off and my visor barely stays on. So what I did is I just ran my mic directly through that hole, just like that guys. It is super low profile. If you do not want to break your visor and run it through this hole, you can either run it through a vent. If you poke a hole through it and run it through the vent, I was going to do that. But previously I just ran my mic down this corner right here and I just ran a strip of electrical tape. It worked great like that until I broke my visor. I was like, you know what? I'll just use the visor mount. So that's how I have my mic in at the top. And if you flip the helmet over, if you guys can see that, that is the mic coming out right there. I have all my wires just stuffed underneath my head padding. Just do that. And if you feel something, when you put your helmet on, just move it around and get it comfortable. I don't feel any of the wires because this padding is thick enough that I don't notice it at all. Then all you do is just run that mic up and underneath your cheek pad. Just like this, you can see on the purple panel mic, it comes with a dead cat. I put that on to reduce wind noise. Quick tip guys, try to not put your mic on the chin vent right here or on any vent because you will get a lot more wind noise than you think. So basically I just run this down. I just stick the mic right on the end like that and I just pinch it in with the cheek pad. It's just dangling in here, but it's not gonna go anywhere, you know. It's not in the way of anything. And it's at the perfect position, so it's not in front of the vent, but it's not too close to my mouth, but it can pick up everything. So that is how I have my mic just wired up. Literally all you have to do is find a way this can get from your GoPro to in front of your mouth. Doesn't matter how it looks, doesn't matter how it feels. So then after you have the mic all in and the GoPro all set up, all you have to do is grab the mic and plug it into the mic adapter. And then of course, slide your GoPro on and then set it to the right angle. It is that simple, that low profile right there, guys. And then if I wanted to night mode a vlog, boom, got my Oxbow Voyager on there, and I am set for anything. So the reason this is my favorite way to do it, guys, there's multiple ways you can, but I found this is the best way. I've done multiple different ways, and I'll explain exactly why this is the best. If you are a single rider and you are not gonna mode a vlog with other people, your friend, your brother, whoever it may be, this is by far 100% all you need to do. If you are gonna ride with a friend or a buddy and they're gonna be moto vlogging with you, you are gonna wanna have them to have the same setup. How we do it as brothers is we each have a Cardo Pack Talk Slim. This is probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. It is super slim up here with your control panel and the battery pack and pretty much the entire computer is back here, so slim and light. I won't get too deep in this, but then it has two JBL speakers on either side and then a mic up front. So I actually have two mics in my helmet. One runs the Cardo and one runs to my GoPro. So that is how me and Dally and Cardi and Brody and Rowdy, we all talk to each other as we all have one of these systems. So how we have this set up exactly, the GoPro only picks up what I am saying inside my helmet. Even though we have these Cardos to talk to each other and respond, the GoPro will only pick up my voice. Dally, Cardi and Brody all have the same GoPro set up in their helmet so they so their gopros pick up exactly what they're saying there's some pros to that and some cons the pros is when i'm trying to talk to my gopro and dally and brody for example are having a conversation or their bikes are making loud noises or they're sniffling my gopro does not pick up any of that and it only picks up what i'm saying that way you have very crisp and smooth audio and video the con to that is when it comes to editing Editing is going to be a little bit harder because you're going to, have to be jumping between their GoPros to get their response or what they're saying to you. So that is why in my videos you see me talking to Dally, I jump frames to when he answers and I jump frames to when I answer to him. So that way we have a clear conversation going. But there's also a pro to that. When you have one long fluid clip of just one person talking and you can hear other people in the background, it kind of gets old. So jumping between frames keeps it interesting, different angles, different bikes, different riders, all in one video, jumping between frames makes it a lot more interesting and easier to watch. So this is why I think this is the best way to have a motovlog set up, especially if you're a single rider, it's really all you have to do. Now don't get me wrong, there are ways you can make your GoPro pick up everybody's voice at once, but 
Trust me, that is very annoying once it comes to editing because you do not have crisp, clear audio. There's always somebody talking over you or something along those lines. If you have an intercom system, instead of running both speakers to your ears, you can always run one up to the mic. So whatever comes out of the speaker is up here so the mic will pick up that sound. We've tried that as well and it's not the greatest. I don't recommend it. So then once you get the hang of editing, this is definitely by far the best way to do it. A lot of people have asked me what editing software I use. I have actually jumped between plenty of platforms but my favorite and the current one I am using is DaVinci Resolve 17. It is absolutely free and has just about everything you need. So let's go take it to the test and hit a few wheelies again. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching. Oh, I almost got that turn. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you can set your helmet up the way we have it. But uh, if you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, guys. Sorry we have not posted recently. We have really good news for our next video. You guys will see very shortly. We got some special things to show you guys. Thank you guys for the support, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.